should we let the migrants in? <laughs> well, this is obviously a really divisive issue. One that's causing not only division and consternation here in Britain, but it's on the point of tearing the EU apart. Mostly from Syria and Afghanistan, but from some other uh, difficult places. They're massing at the eastern borders of Europe. They're being kept out, it seems, by force. Many are cold, hungry, in trouble. Same thing's happening in the southern border of the United States. Massive numbers are at the Mexican border. Many have walked from failed states in Central America. Some have even come across from Africa into Central America to get to the states. Failed states, religious extremism, global warming, economic pressure, and simply the desire for a decent life are driving all this. It, it sometimes seems like it will never stop. Uh, so, what is to be done? Well, some say we should absolutely stop them, tell them to go back to where they came from, while others say we should welcome them with compassion and sensible public policy. I, I look at both views. Oh, boy, this is a tough one. Um, first of all, yes, we should. We, we, should uh, we should allow them in. Well, look, as human beings, we simply can't look the other way when large numbers of people are suffering and when the, when the solution to their problems is one that's available to us. Uh, with sensible public policy and processing, we can certainly make use of such people in all of our uh, more affluent nations, and we should do so. Uh, furthermore, shutting out people from other cultures uh, could cause alienation more than we have now, anger, possible terrorist danger to all of us, a lot of people upset that they weren't allowed in. Um, in, in most Western countries, we have a demographic crisis, the ratio of the working population to the, to the, to the uh, retired population, which has to be supported with pension payments, is constantly declining. At the same time, we have labor shortages in almost any industry you can name. Letting in migrants, especially those with the appropriate skills, just makes total sense. Uh, it's a macroeconomic necessity. And by the way, here in Britain, we're uh, not allowing the uh, asylum seekers to work, so we haven't quite figured that one out yet. In short, it's both the wise and the right thing to do. Well, what about those that say, no, we should not let the migrants in? Well, first of all, uh, as many people would say, we just don't have the room. Uh, because of the influx of migrants, huge house building projects are underway here in Britain, a policy which many lovers of the countryside and clean air fervently oppose. We simply don't have the space and the infrastructure to be able to accommodate a vast influx of people. Uh, next, our hard-working citizens do not need one more depressing effect on their wages. Uh, a big influx of immigrants taking their jobs will certainly result in that. And uh, it has to be said that uh, many of these immigrants are criminals and religious fanatics. They'll only cause more trouble. Terrorist uh, offenses and crime levels are certain to increase. We have enough of that now. We don't need any more. And uh, migrants are less likely to have been vaccinated. So they represent a serious force source of uh, further COVID infection for, for the native population, for the people that are here now. And any influx of immigrants will certainly encourage the support for populist politicians like Trump. I mean, these are destructive people, these politicians. They're purveyors of hate. They're generally on the wrong side of history. Let's not encourage them. And some of the source countries, uh, like Syria, for example, uh, before the current difficulties, a pretty sensible place. They actually have the potential to sort themselves out. And when, when they do, the migrants can go back. We might have to give them temporary accommodation, uh, but certainly not on a permanent basis. And uh, perhaps most importantly, Britain and other Western nations are virtually bankrupt from financing the treatment and recovery from COVID. We simply don't have the financial capacity to welcome mendicants. 
So, I guess the bottom line on all of this is we have enough problems now, we don't need any more. Well, gosh, those are some pretty strong views on both sides of this question. And, and uh, uh, to, the, the, to their adherents, they make a lot of sense. Well, with all of that, what is my take on all of this? Well, like it or not, we're, we're stuck with large-scale migratory movements for the foreseeable future. That's just the way it is. Um, so many of the factors which are driving these movements are intractable. Uh, they've been in place for generations and they're just getting worse. They show no sign, no hope of elimination. Global warming is not going to go away. That's sending some of them. Governments run by avaricious tribal chieftains stashing money in numbered bank accounts will continue. Economically failed states that are pushing them all in our direction, they're unlikely to suddenly become productive. Get used to it. It's a phenomenon that's here to stay, and we must devise the structures as well as the mentality to cope with it. Well, <laughs> I hope you like that. I bet you about half of you won't. But in any case, uh, if you did like it, please uh, give, me a, give me a like, uh, subscribe, comment, uh, and so forth. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.